Hi, welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to solve Cambridge IGCSE Mathematics Paper 4 Extended Variant 41 October November 2019. Question number one. This is about angles and triangle. In the diagram AC and BG are straight lines. Find the value of P and Q. Because it's a straight line, angles in a straight line equal to 180. Therefore, P plus 48 equals 180. P is equal to 180 minus 48 will get 132. To find Q, we know that this is vertically opposite angle. So this angle is equal to 48. And the sum property of angle Triangle tells us that when we add all the three angles, which is Q plus 55 plus 48, we will have 180. Therefore, Q is equal to 180 minus 55 minus 48 will get 74. Part B, the angles of a quadrilateral are given to us. There are four angles, 1, 2, 3, 4. Find the value of X. In a quadrilateral, when you add the interior angles, the total is 360. So we are going to add all these angles and make it equal to 360. Now add the like terms together, add all the x's together, and we will have 2x plus 2x plus 1, 5x. And then the numbers plus 5 minus 25 plus 10 will give you negative 10 is equal to 360. 5x is equal to 360 plus 10, which is 370, divide by 5, and we will get 74. So x is 74. Next, a regular polygon has 72 sides. Find the size of an interior angle. To find the one interior angle we use the formula n minus 2 multiplied by 180 divided by n n is your number of sides so 72 minus 2 multiplied by 180 divided by 72 and the answer is 175 so that is the size of an interior angle. Part D, we have been given a circle and there are triangles inside. We will need to use the circle theorems. I hope you are aware of all the circle theorems. Let's see what has been given to us now. Before we start solving the questions, these are the circle theorems that you will need. Pause the video and very neatly write down all the circle theorems so you will know when to apply which theorem. The first one is to find u. u is here. This is a tangent and this is the radius. So this is the rule we are going to use. The angle between a radius and a tangent is 90 degrees. So this angle is 90 degrees. Therefore u is equal to 90 minus 60 which is 30. The next one is v. To find v, Let's write down 30 here first. To find V, we know that this is a diameter and this is the angle opposite the diameter. This is the rule. The angle in a semicircle is 90 degrees. Therefore, angle D is 90 degrees. And we already have U. To find V, we are going to use the sum angle property of triangle. 90 plus 30 plus V is equal to 180. Therefore, V is equal to 180 minus 120. 90 plus 30 is 120. That will give you 60. V is 60. Next one before we write, so this is 60. Next, we have to find W. W is here. W originates from A and D, right? A and D, that's the beginning. And V originates also from A and D. So we can use this rule. The angles in the same segment from a common chord are equal. 
the chord is AD, so therefore W is also going to be 60. Next is X. To find X, this is X here. We need to understand that this line is the radius and this line is the radius. Therefore, this angle will be equal to U because it's an isosceles triangle. And to find X, we are going to write X plus 30 plus 30 is equal to 180, right? Because it's a triangle. So X is equal to 180 minus 60. 30 plus 30 is 60. X is 120. And now we are left with Y. Where is Y? Here. Can you see that this is a triangle? We have all the parts of the triangle, all the angles of the triangle except Y. If we add all these because they are angle, they are all going to equal, when you add it up, the sum of it is going to equal to 180. So let's write it down here. Y plus 140 is equal to 180. Y is equal to 180 minus 140, which is 40. It was not a very difficult question, quite easy if you know your circle theorems. Part A of the question is again related to circle theorems. A, B, and C lie on the circle center O. A, O, C is given to us and A, B, C is given to us. Find the value of X. For this question, we are going to use the circle theorem that tells us that the angle at the center is twice the angle at the circumference. We know that angles at a point equal to 360. So this plus 3x plus 22 is equal to 360. So if I want to find this angle here, because that is twice the angle at the circumference, I have to subtract my angle from 360. 360 minus, remember to put a bracket, plus 22 is equal to 2 times the angle at the circumference, which is 5x. So 360 minus 3x minus 22 is equal to 10x. 360 minus 22 will give us 338. Sorry, 338. The Negative 3x, when we move to the other side, it's positive 3x. 338 is equal to 13x. 338 divided by 13 is 26. So therefore, our x is 26. Question number 2a. Ali and Moshe share a sum of money in the ratio 9 is to 7. Ali receives 600 more than Mo. So this is Ali and this is Mo. If Mo receives X, Ali receives 600 plus X. Therefore, the total money is the amount that Ali and Mo receives, which is 600 plus X plus X. That will give us 600 plus 2X. Mo receives seven part out of the total parts. How many parts are there? Nine plus seven, 16. Of the total, what is our total? 600 plus 2x. And how much does he receive? x. I hope you have understood this. Now before expanding the bracket, let's move the denominator to the other side. It's a divide, so when I move to the other side, it will be a multiply. Now expand the bracket, 16x. We will shift the 14x to the other side. There will be a sign change. So 4200 is equal to 2x. Divide by 2 and you will get 2100 is equal to x. So more receives 2100. 
and Ali receives 600 more than what Mo receives, which is 2,700. In part B, in a sale, Ali buys a television for $195.80. The original price was $220. Calculate the percentage reduction on the original price. Whether there's a reduction, decrease or increase, we use the formula. Difference of the two values that we have with the original value down, multiply by 100. So we have been given 222 minus 195.80 the big value minus the smaller value and what was our original price 220 we just have to multiply by 100 so we have 11 percentage knowing the formulas makes things very easy next part in the sale mo buys a jacket for 63 dollars the original price was reduced by 25 percentage. Calculate the original price of the jacket. For this, you need to know the original price or the value of anything. Multiply by the percentage reduction or increase, depending on the question, will give you your new value. To find this part here, if it is a reduction, subtract from 100 okay and then divide by 100 if it is an increase instead of subtracting add that is what we'll put here now so he buys uh we don't know the original price right we have to find it and 75 divided by 100 is 0 0.75 the new value is 63 therefore the original price will be 63 divided by 0 0.75 it's a multiply so we bring to the other side it will be a divide and the answer is 84 this here is a very important formula that you need to know this type of question is repeated quite often question number three part a Dina invests $600 for 5 years at a rate of 2.2 percentage per year compound interest. Calculate the value of this investment at the end of the 5 years. We need to use the compound interest formula, which is A is equal to P bracket 1 plus R over 100 to the power of N. What is P? P is the principal, R is the rate of interest, and N is the number of years. And A is the amount or the final value of the investment. So in our case, P is 600, N is 5, and R is 2. To find the amount, so 600, 1 plus R, which is 2 over 100 to the power of 5. We will get 662.448 rounding to two decimals because money we round it to two decimals 662.45 dollars that's our answer next question the value of a gold ring increases exponentially at a rate of five percentage per year the value is now 882 calculate the value of the ring two years ago when you have increases exponentially or decreases exponentially we basically use the same formula if it is decreases in place of plus we are going to put minus so the same compound interest formula is used we have been given the final value it is 882 so let's write that down 882 is equal to our initial value which was a principal which we don't know 1 plus rate is 5 over 100 to the power of 2 because that is our number of years. You can either simplify or you can see that the bracket is there. So this is a multiply. You can just bring everything to the other side and write divide. 
this will be more complicated so we can write like this 882 divided by 1 plus 5 over 100 to the power of 2 it's easier to write like this no need to simplify just put everything in the calculator for the answer and you will get 800 as your answer so that was the value of the ring two years ago Part 2. Find the number of complete years it takes for the ring's value of 882 to increase to a value greater than 1100. We are going to again use the same rule. Our final answer is it has to be more than 110. And your principle is 882. The rate of interest is 5, which we were given in the last question. But we don't know the number of years. So this is a multiply. When we move here, we'll get divide 882 and put the inside in the bracket this part, and you will get 1.05 to the power of n. We are going to write this side also in a decimal form. This is 1.247. And this is 1.05 by trial and error see which number when you substitute in place of n will be more than 1.247 your answer so 1.05 to the power of 2 to the power of 3 we'll check it out so 1.05 to the power of 2 in place of n we are substituting 2 we get 1.1025 it's less than 1.247 same way we try for power of 3, power of 4. And when you substitute in place of N5, you will get the answer 1.276, which will give us more than 1.247. So your answer of N is 5. Question number 4. Calculate the external curved surface area of a cylinder with radius 8 and height. 19 meters so this is our cylinder and if you want to find the curved surface area this is this part here the formula is 2 pi r h r is your radius and h is your height so we just have to now substitute 2 multiply by pi multiply by 8 multiply by 19 is 955 square meters rounded to the whole number next part this surface is painted at a cost of 0 0.85 per square meter calculate the cost of painting this surface we have already found our area and per square meter it is in square meter the cost is 0 0.85 dollars so the total cost will be 955 multiplied by 0 0.85 this will give us 811.787 you can write it as 811.78 or you can round it to a whole number which is 812 part b a solid metal sphere with radius 6 centimeter is melted down and all of the metal is used to make a solid cone with radius 8 cm and height h cm. Show that h is equal to 13.5. We have been given the radius and if we are going to melt down the sphere, the volume of the sphere is going to be the same as the volume of the cone. So first we are going to find the volume of the sphere. So volume of sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cube. What is our r? 8. Sorry, it is uh, 6. 6 cube. And we will get 288 pi. For questions like this, don't simplify. Leave the pi as it is. Now we know that the volume of the cone is 288 pi 
and the formula to find the volume of the cone which is given to us is one third pi r square h and the cone radius is eight so in place of r we'll substitute eight square multiplied by h so 288 pi is equal to just put this in the calculator and you will get 64 over 3 pi 288 pi divided by 64 over 3 pi will give us our height that is 13.5 so we found our height, we showed that it was equal to 13.5. The next part of the question, calculate the slant height of the cone. We know that the radius is 8 and the height is 13.5. Let's look at how the cone looks like. This is how a cone looks like. This is your radius and this is your height. This side here, this is your slant height. To find the slant height, we'll use the Pythagoras theorem because this is a right angle. Your height is 13.5 and your radius is 8. You want to find this side opposite your right angle. It means you want to find the Pythagoras, uh, sorry, the hypotenuse. So using the Pythagoras theorem, a square plus b square is equal to c square. c is your hypotenuse and a and B are your other two sides. Square root them to get C because we don't want C square, we want C. And that will give us 15.69, rounded to one decimal, 15.7 centimeter. Next part of the question, calculate the curved surface area of the cone. We have already been given the formula, area is equal to pi r l. We have all the things that we need to solve. We have got the radius, which is 8, and the slant height, which we just found, 15.7. This will give us 394.58 square centimeter. You can round it to a whole number, and you will have 395 square centimeter. Or you can leave it like that. It's fine. Part C of the question, let's read the question. Two cones are mathematically similar. The total surface area of the smaller cone is 80 square centimeter. The larger cone is 180 square centimeter. And the volume of the smaller cone is 168 cubic centimeter. Calculate the volume of the larger cone. Whenever you have a similar shape question, first try to find the scale factor. We write the scale factor as K. So this is your smaller cone and this is your larger cone. The surface area of the smaller cone is 80 and the larger cone is 180. 80 multiplied by the scale factor, which is k squared, because it is an area, we square it, will give you 180. So what is your k going to be? 180 divided by 80 and this is a square. So if I want to find k, I will square root my answer. This will give us 3 over 2. So that is our scale factor. Now to find the volume. This is the smaller cone and the larger cone. The smaller cone volume is 168. Our scale factor is 3 over 2. We are going to cube it because for volume we cube the scale factor. And we will get 567. So 567 cubic centimeter is the volume of the large cone. Part 3. The diagram shows a pyramid with a square base ABCD. So this is a square base. DB is 8 centimeter. P is vertically above the center X of the base. And PX is 5 centimeter. So this is 5 centimeter. And this line here is 8 centimeter. We have to calculate the angle between PB and the base ABCD. 
So this is a triangle that we are looking at. This is P, this is 90 degrees, X and P. DX is 8, so XP will be 4 and PX is 5. We need to find this angle. We will be using the trigonometric identity. I hope you are, know the identities very well. Sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse and tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. You can memorize it by saying so ka toa. If you practice, it becomes easy. Now we have to check what we have. This is the angle. We got the opposite. So right now you have the opposite. And this side is your adjacent. What does that tell us? We have to use tan. Therefore, 10B is equal to opposite, which is 5, and adjacent, 4. B is equal to 10 inverse, 5 over 4. Angle B is equal to 51.34. We can round it to one decimal place. So 51.3. And that brings us to the end of this tutorial. For question number 5 onwards, please watch the part 2. Thank you for watching. If I have helped you, kindly subscribe to my channel and do share it with your friends. It will help them. Thank you once again.